This program contains graphic images and discussion of medical procedures. Viewer discretion is advised. Thanks, and uh, it's a great honor to have Dr. Andros up here moderating with me. Uh, uh, no disclosures for this. Um, so, of course, following Joe Mills um, and then having a title uh, of your talk having to do with Wi-Fi, of course, means that um, a lot of this will look familiar, but we'll have a couple extra points. So, you know, I think one of the things um, that was sort of interesting in looking at this uh, is that there was a, a fairly recent uh, meta-analysis looking at contemporary natural history studies of patients with critical limb ischemia. Uh, it turns out that when there are gene therapy trials for unreconstructable, unreconstructable critical limb ischemia, there now are um, these studies with the placebo arms that give us kind of nice contemporary data about what happens with CLI. And uh, so these are patients with CLI, they don't undergo revascularization, and overall they found a one-year mortality rate of about 22%, one-year major amputation rate of about 22%, but the one-year rate of wound worsening um, was about 35%. And uh, not surprisingly, these, none of these studies really talk about wounds ever healing. Uh, because they they typically don't, but um, the you know these rates of amputation um, and mortality are you know a, a sort of on par with what we think. But the the worsening of these wounds can really become a problem. Um, and you know one of the issues here is uh, you know obviously a foot like this is going to need some kind of treatment. Uh, you know, but when we look at these different studies, of course, are we talking about the same wound? Because if it ends up with a successful healed TMA that the patient's walking on, of course, that's what we were uh, shooting for. But if, if it ends up with a baloney amputation, you know, of course, uh, it'd be good to know where we started. And if this was the same foot in San Francisco as it was in Houston, uh, as it was, uh, you know, at the Jocelyn Center. So the Wi-Fi classification, um, sort of suffice it to say, there's not a whole lot in here actually about wound healing. There is, of course, this graph, which um, is fairly famous in terms of the, the importance of perfusion of the foot. Uh, but of course, Wi-Fi is designed more to look at amputation and um, the benefit of revascularization. <clears throat> and in the past uh, three years now, there have been a number of studies to look at Wi-Fi and amputation. and as has been pointed out, you know, you don't find this graph in the main paper, you find it in the online appendix, um, which also kind of speaks to why it uh, doesn't exactly have the polished look. But in general, the, these are predicted amputation rates. Uh, looking at the published series so far, I've sort of put the published, the uh, predicted rates up at the top. Um, you see that there's a fairly wide range here of amputation rates. But all, you know, with the exception of this uh, sort of early study, which had, as you can tell, a lot of uh, very high stage uh, uh, patients, uh, the, you know, these amputation rates are lower than what would be expected for the natural history of untreated critical ischemia. So that's um, encouraging. Uh, so, you know, of course, if we sort of take a step back and say, well, how does wound healing fit into this? Of course, this is paramount to avoiding amputation. This is, these are just a couple um, graphs that illustrate this point that you um, uh, have a much higher risk of amputation uh, if you have an unhealed wound. So the top bar being uh, the unhealed wounds, the lower being the healed wounds. And you can see the rate of amputation is much lower if your wound heals. Also, there's something to do with the velocity with which your wound heals. So wounds that heal within four months, uh, you, again, are going to have a lower rate of amputation um, where, compared to the wounds that are going to be not healed by four months, uh, if ever. Uh, and so the Wi-Fi system sort of indirectly addresses uh, this wound healing by estimating the benefit um, from revascularization. So again, uh, you know, basically, uh, this is a, sort of a consensus statement, but is, as you would expect, the patients with a high level of ischemia, high uh, ischemia grade, are going to be the ones most likely to benefit from a revascularization procedure. Uh, 
Um, and so this has been, there are fewer studies that have really looked at this in regards specifically to Wi-Fi scores, but here are two. This is one from uh, Dr. Mills Group in Arizona and from us at UCSF. Uh, and what you see in this uh, graph was that for the patients who were in stage three, there was a significant improvement in wound healing uh, for patients who were revascularized. It was 94 days versus uh, 238. Uh, when we looked at our data uh, at UCSF, what we found was that there was a significant improvement for those patients who had ischemia grade 3. They had a significantly longer wound healing times uh, than any of the other uh, grades. So there are a few studies here, um, including uh, this latest one from us that was presented at the Western this past year. It's currently in press. Um, but as you can see, uh, these studies have a very wide range of um, wound healing rates, anything from, uh, you know, 79, 80 plus percent uh, to 37 percent. The one um, sort of caveat I'll say about our results from uh, this study, this 55 percent overall also includes recurrences. So this was an, instead of just a did the uh, initial wound heal? This was, well, did the initial wound heal and stay healed? So at one year, was the patient wound free or not? Um, whereas m most of these other studies actually were looking at, did the initial wound heal? Uh, and if you look at the trends here, you see that in general, the, uh, the stage, the Wi-Fi stage is correlated with the or has an inverse correlation with the uh, chances of wound healing. So higher stage wounds were less likely to heal. Uh, the exception being, of course, us uh, at UCSF. Um, we're just kind of special. Uh, but I think we've got an answer for that, um, which is that if, first of all, we sort of have to think a little bit. Uh, the nice thing about doing a literature review and only having five papers uh, to go over uh, is that we can uh, sort of look at each of them a little bit individually and so say, well, what are the differences here? Well, you know, the first is that these three are all retrospective. Uh, you know, this, uh, the Cole paper, again, was one of the, was the first one to come out to look at uh, the association between wound healing and amputation and Wi-Fi scores, but it was retrospectively applied to a very, uh, you know, uh, very well characterized cohort of patients from a wound care center. Uh, Darling, um, you know, this is a very large series uh, from uh, Boston, but it again is retrospective. Uh, and then this uh, uh, paper from Arizona it kind of is quasi-retrospective uh, because as we know, Dr. Mills had already been doing something similar to, uh, to Wi-Fi all along. Uh, the paper from UCSF and this one from um, Baltimore are two that were actually prospectively collected. And so um, part of the difference uh, with these groups is that these upper two are cohorts that are entirely revascularized. So all of these were, were patients who were revascularized and then Wi-Fi scores were retrospectively applied. The other three uh, studies here also were in fact uh, uh, groups of patients, um, many inpatients, but in, uh, in both the Arizona and the UCSF paper, uh, but um, this uh, paper from Baltimore is actually kind of unique because it's, uh, uh, in fact, all diabetic patients in their diabetic foot ulcer clinic. Um, so it actually is a, a predominantly outpatient group. But if you look, then what you sort of start to see is a little pattern here that in these patients in the retrospective group of completely revascularized patients, chances are these patients were being revascularized because they had wounds that were thought to be, you know, very um, difficult to heal or putting the patient at a high risk, uh, as opposed to the cohorts where we include patients who are revascularized or not. This is more of kind of a, a cross-sectional uh, of um, studies of all the patients who are coming into a, a limb preservation center. So uh, narrowing this down even more to wound healing time, you see that again, um, 
Uh, there's one center that doesn't really have a relationship in terms of the stage and the time to healing, and there's two other centers where the higher the stage, the longer it takes to heal a wound. But if you look a little closer at this data, actually what you see is that what is a little different about the UCSF data as opposed to um, Arizona or Baltimore is the very high rate of revascularization that was occurring in this cohort. 90% of the stage 4 patients were being revascularized, 64% of the stage 3, and even 29 of the stage 1. And I think that that in pro more than likely explains part of the, uh, uh, the very different um, profile of wound healing in this cohort. So I think there's a, there's a little uh, sort of uh, there's a little risk here of sort of making Wi-Fi almost sort of a uh, falling down the legionology hole here in terms of Wi-Fi and wound healing because the fact is that the Wi-Fi is more of a classification system that's sort of a systematic assessment of the threatened limb uh, and revascularization of course is going to reduce the time that it takes to heal wounds, improve wound healing, reduce amputation rates, uh, but it doesn't do anything about the patient that's attached to that wound. Uh, in terms of diabetes, end-stage renal disease, nutritional factors like low albumin, the inflammatory biomarkers, uh, things like the extensive microvascular disease. Uh, it doesn't really tell you about those things, and it also doesn't really tell you about the multidisciplinary services that we've uh, been hearing about and sort of what is being done to, um, to make sure that the patients are offloaded and are getting appropriate wound care after their um, initial foot procedures and revascularization procedures. So I think that, you know, the data here are pretty strong uh, to sort of validate that there is a relationship between Wi-Fi stage and amputation rate. Uh, I think that the relationship, the correlation between Wi-Fi score and wound healing is not as simple. Uh, revascularization clearly improves the rate of wound healing and getting ad, uh, getting complete and control of the infection uh, is, of course, important as well. Uh, but I think that after the revascularization, the patient and healthcare system factors um, determine the time to healing. And I think that, as Dr. Mills mentioned uh, just a moment ago, that restaging of Wi-Fi after an intervention uh, is probably going to be an important part of predicting not only successful wound healing, but wound recurrence. Thanks.